Okay, Alexander, let's discuss what's going on in the UK and a feud that has broken out between Sunak and Quarte. Explain to us, for those people that are not in the UK or may not be uh, aware as to who Sunak and Quarte are, explain who they are, explain what this feud's about, and explain how we uh, predicted this about two, three weeks ago, that we said something like this would happen, and sure enough, here we are. So what's going on? Who are these people that are quarreling, and what's going on? Actually, Alex, we discussed this and predicted this not not just weeks ago. We predicted it months ago. If you remember, a while back, there were all kinds of scandals being whipped up around uh, Boris Johnson. There was talk about wallpaper. There was talk about corruption and all those sort of things. And we were saying at that time that Rishi Sunak, who is the chancellor, was clearly being positioned by a faction within the Conservative Party to mount a coup against. Johnson. And we also said at that time, this is months long, long before anybody else was talking about this, we identified Kwasi Kwarteng, who is the business secretary, as Sunak's most likely opponent and rival for Boris Johnson's chair. In other words, somebody would be positioned eventually to take on uh, uh, Sunak, to take, a, uh, uh, to take on Sunak as they that they will fight out as to who will be uh, taking over from Johnson when Johnson goes. And um, we we predicted it. And if you go back in time and you see our programmes, the programmes that we were doing months ago, we identified these two people. This is long before anybody else was saying it. We were saying that Sunak is the more Remainer side of the Conservative Party. Kwarteng represents the more leave side of the Conservative Party. Now, the interesting thing is they're both almost from identical class backgrounds. Sunak is a gazillionaire, enormously rich, married into wealth. He went into Winchester Public School, which is one of the big private schools in England we call the very expensive private schools we call the public schools just to confuse everybody but he is from that background so he is big money and he's from the public school background Quarteng is from Eton which is of course the public school most people around the world have heard of he is also from money not nowhere near as much as Sunak but there is an element of two public school boys fighting it out between each other. And it is clear now that Sunak for some time has been gunning after Johnson. Sunak's position got weakened as a result of a um, cabinet reshuffle. He he struck Johnson too, too soon, and Johnson remains at the moment, in control. <clears throat> so Sunak's position has been weakened. And what's happened in the meantime is that Kwarteng is now rising. Now, as we all know, there's an economic crisis in Britain. There's a major en- energy shortages. Various businesses around the north of England and in the Midlands of England are running out of cash. They've asked the government for for cash, for money, for financial support. And Kwarteng, who is the business secretary, met with their representatives and gave them to understand that the government would be supporting them. Now, Sunak comes back and says Kwarteng had no right to do that. He didn't consult the Treasury. He didn't consult me as finance minister. I knew nothing about this. Uh, Kwarteng is making promises he's not entitled to make. He's writing checks he cannot cash. And uh, he's, he said that, or Treasury officials in Britain have said that publicly. And what's happened now is that Johnson has come out publicly and he's backed Kwarteng against Sunak. So we have this battle now heating up between these two people. But of course, it's important not to joke about it too much. I mean, this is two Eton boys, Johnson and Kwarteng versus the Winchester boy, Sunak. That's one way of looking at it. But actually, it's not a funny business. It's not comedy. It's a battle for the soul of the Conservative Party. Is it Sunak, who is connected to the finance capital, to the City of London, 
who is a you know prepared to ease off with on tensions with the EU, even though of course he pretends to be a lever, or is it going to be Kwarteng, who is a more uh, supports the industrial wing of the Conservative Party, who supports a more leave position? The battle between the two is joined. We predicted that it was going to come happen. It's now out in the open. And I predict there's going to be an epic battle between the two over the course of the next couple of months. And my money is on Kwarteng to win. Why? Why are you choosing Kwarteng? Well, I, right. There's two reasons. Firstly, I think he has more support within the Conservative backbenches, that is to say with Tory MPs, than um, uh, Sunak does. Because, of course, what's happening is that those MPs are being contacted by the businesses and the you know, small industrial groups in their in their. Uh, constituencies there, the places they represent, and they're coming along, they say we're under terrible pressure, we need the government to support us, Quarting says he wants to support them, Sunak says he doesn't, they're going to go with Quarting because politically they want to keep the local businesses, the local industries operating. They depend on the support of those people. They depend on the support of the people who work for those companies. So they're going to line up behind Kwarteng. And Johnson himself is going to line up behind Kwarteng because Kwarteng is loyal to him and Sunak is not. And Johnson is prime minister and that, of course, is an important factor. So I, I predict he's going to back Kwarteng, as he is at the moment. And I think the, the, lo- the, the backbenchers, the Conservative MPs, are going to back Kwarteng too. Um, Kwarteng, in my opinion, and I should say, by the way, I know him slightly. I, I, I've met him a few times. I've never met Sumac, Sunak. We're not friends, and I want to make that very clear. I mean, not not in any we're not close friends or anything like that but i have met him he's always struck me as a very clever man and i think he's timing his moves extremely skillfully he's he may actually be the next prime minister and that may actually come with boris's blessing is that how you're seeing it no i don't think so (laughs) i don't think he's gonna it's gonna come with boris's blessing i certainly think he's gonna i certainly think there's a chance that he's going to become the next prime minister but assuming he wins out against sunak which i predict he will Uh, at that point of course uh, he's going to find that Johnson um, having got rid of Sunak is going to start worrying about him now I think Kwarteng who as I said I've met is a more potent adversary ultimately than Sunak is because Kwarteng knows how to work the backbenches He knows how to speak to Conservative MPs. He doesn't push himself forward in the way that Sunak did. And I think he's not going to let success go to his head in the way that he did with Sunak. So I think that he's going to be a more difficult person for um, Johnson to remove. But I don't think Johnson wants to leave Downing Street. And I think that before very long, once Sunak is dispatched, we're going to see a battle between Johnson and, and, and Kwarteng as well. So it's, it, that's conservative politics for you. But Kwarteng, who is, by the way, uh, um, of Ghan- Ghanaian aristocracy background, he's black, he might very well be the first black conservative MP. He's uh, very much a conservative, however, as I said, he's been to public school, he's not ever had much time for some of the things that we've been seeing in the United States, that's not his kind of politics at all, and I think he'd be a pretty formidable uh, um, adversary, uh, both for Johnson and further down in the, for the Labour Party, where he did become Prime Minister. So I think there's a fair chance that he could be Prime Minister, perhaps quite soon, but he won't. we won't see Johnson going willingly. That I don't expect at all. All right, so he's not into, into woke ideology. Oh, no. You wouldn't categorise him as a neoliberal. No. Uh, you mentioned Labour. What is Labour saying? What are they thinking as they're watching all of this unfold? They're saying absolutely nothing. They're more inti- intent 
on fighting out their own battles. And here I have to say there's a fundamental difference because when conservatives fight each other, they fight for power. I mean, it's a it's a absolute open battle over power and control of the party and the direction of policy and where they're going to take Britain and who the prime minister is going to be. When the Labour Party fights each fights itself as it's doing it's about ideology <laughs> and as a result it's of no interest to the vast majority of the British people they're completely switched off this the conservatives in the midst of an economic crisis are still out polling Labour by a significant margin because at least they are dealing with the problems of the country and at least they're addressing the real problems that people feel, whereas Labour, as I said, they're caught up in ideological conflicts and struggles, and they have a leader, Keir Starmer, that nobody particularly likes or is even able to understand. Whereas um, Kwarteng is, I, I, again, I'm going to say this, I mean, he has a, he does have an instinct, even though, as I said, he comes from a public school background, but he does have an instinct. He's a very good speaker. He's a very good House of Commons performer. I've seen him in action there. And he's, I think, the sort of person who could communicate to uh, the British people and do it very successfully. It's interesting also, by the way, that the party that makes a big play on identity issues, the Labour Party, all its leadership, pretty much, uh, are, 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 are English, <laughs> whereas the Conservative Party has a much more diverse group. They have Sunak, who's you know African-Indian. They have Kwasi, who's black, from Ghana. They have people, they have many more people from uh, uh, ethnicities than you find in the Labour Party. So the one party which is obsessed with identity issues <laughs> doesn't reflect them in its leadership. The party that isn't doesn't care about such things just goes ahead and promotes people based on merit or skill or, or what whatever. So that's that's an interesting contrast in itself, I think. Well, listening to you, it sounds like uh, Quarteg is, is quite good, or quite promising, I don't want to say good, quite promising, at least on paper and from what you've seen on him uh, giving speeches and, and the way yeah. he's... Uh, He's performed in his uh, position. What is... Uh, oh, yes. I, I think so. What we yeah. don't yet know is whether he would be a good manager. And that that is, is an impossible thing at the moment. I mean, he's been business secretary for a short time. At least he meets people. I mean, he calls in all the industrialists and people like that. And he chairs meetings and he listens to what they say. But how good a manager he actually is, I'm afraid I don't think anybody knows. And we won't know until he's in the position to make those sort of decisions. Is he, is he going to be like uh, a, a sovereigntist type of, of individual if he were to be prime minister, a sovereigntist type of leader? Would he uh, would he take on the EU's bullying, for example? Would he maybe look to to take the UK into various different trade deals, perhaps some uh, different foreign policy or diplomatic uh, endeavors that we haven't seen before? Maybe rapprochement with Russia, maybe deal with the United States differently. Does he seem like the type of person that'll that, that'll make some some bold decisions? I, I think the, sh the short and straightforward answer is we don't know. As I said, I met him. My impression of him was an extremely clever man. He's an erudite man. He's a he's, he's you know historian. He's got all that sort of background i don't get the impression that he's the sort of person who suffers from you know great ideological hang-ups um, i i can imagine him you know being prepared for example to go to moscow and talk to people there and to discuss energy policy i think i can i find that easier to imagine with him than i might with i with other people but don't forget, you know, the problems, the political problems in Britain of doing that would be enormous. And at the moment, he's not going to give the, any indication that he's prepared to take those sort of risks. So, you know, I, I, I can't predict what he's going to do. But if, you're, if you want someone who is more likely, or at least who's positioning himself, to take a more sovereignist position, I would certainly say that it's Kwarteng. Uh, it's definitely not Sunak. Sunak is big, 
globalist capital. That's what he's always been about. And Kwarteng looks like the only person in the cabinet who's able to take him on. I always thought that would be the case. And it's fascinating to see how it's actually playing out exactly along the lines that I'd expected. So I think he probably will be more sovereignist. I certainly think he has, as we put it like this, a much greater awareness of the world outside the world of finance capital. Remember, he talks to industrialists, he talks to business people, he talks to people like that, rather than to the big bankers, the big financial institutions, in the big money sloshing around the city of London, which is Sunak's political constituency. So you can see the difference between the two. I would say that Kwarteng did work in the city for a time. <clears throat> he did work with the finance, uh, in the financial services industry. But um, there are stories, which I absolutely can't confirm, that he wasn't entirely happy doing that, and that he's more comfortable with, you know, in talking to, you know, business people and industrial groups than with the big money that Sunak belongs to and is most comfortable talking about. So that points to a more sovereignist approach and it talks to a more, um, uh, that, that, an anti-globalist ap approach. By the way, uh, Kwarteng also knows the United States very well. I mean, he's, as I say, he studied in Cambridge and done all kinds of things there, but I know that he's also been in, studied for a time in the United States, so he, he, he also knows the US reasonably well. Better, I suspect, than Sunak does. All right, very interesting development. We will be following it. As you said, we have been predicting this for a while now, and uh, it's moving along the lines that, that we talked about, so let's continue to see what's going on. Guys, go to the Duran.locals.com. Check us out there. We're doing all kinds of great content, exclusive content that you'll find on the Duran.locals.com. You'll find the link to that down below. Also go to the Duran shop, 10% off when you use the code Real News. You'll find a link for that down below. And don't forget, we have all our videos on the alternative new media platforms, Rumble, BitChute, Super U, and Odyssey. You'll find all those links as well underneath this video in the description box. Take care, everybody.